spawning over here in the top left hand corner. The Red Terran, the WCS America Season 2 winner, it is CM Storm's Pulp! Can he repeat it again? His opponent spawning in the top right hand corner, the Axiom player, the Terran Mammoth. It is Hart! And I think Hart is considered the underdog here. I mean, let's be honest, uh, on, if you look at Oligulac right now, Polt is absurdly high up in the rankings. He's actually number yeah. one in those rankings, Andre. <laughs> uh, on top of that, if you looked, uh, someone posted on Reddit recently that he's like 50 and five in the last couple yeah, of months. Yeah, I think he has like 91% in matches and 78% in individual games. It was either that or the other way around in games and matches, but it's incredibly high percentages. And these were the kind of win percentages you saw a flash in StarCraft 1. It's insane being able to win this high of a percentage of the time at pro level matches. And I would say nobody has been able to do that before. I mean, we always talk about how Jadong has that percentage for only a ZVZ. But if you factor in a ZVP and a ZVT, it's not anywhere close. Pult has that well-roundedness that we just have not seen from anybody, the dominance that we haven't seen from anybody uh, since the beginning of Wings of Liberty. And that's something, a true accomplishment. And let's not forget, Pult isn't a full-time pro gamer. Nope, he's a student at the same time. And I'd be willing to bet he's a pretty good student as well. <laughs> I would be willing to bet that as well. Now we have very interesting build orders. A command center first, something that you don't normally see. A lot of times command center first is considered obsolete because of Reaper openings. And that's exactly what we're seeing out of Hart. Hart throwing down the Reaper to start things off and going directly up to a second refinery. Wow. That's really quick. So he's looking to do just all out pressure early on. Probably going to go directly to Cloak Banshees. Yeah, I think once he sees the CC first, Cloak Banshees would definitely be his build of yeah. choice. Because there's not that easy of a way to defend when you're going with the CC first build. The Vikings are later. So you have to defend using Marines and Missile Turrets for a yeah. little bit. What's so cool about this build is Pult sees this. And normally when you see this in TBT, you eliminate any Cloak Banshee out of your mind you say it's never going to happen because they got a Reaper. Why would you get a Reaper? That's 25 seconds of mining on a gas. That's actually reducing any sort of, of speed of your Banshee by an incredible amount. Normally you'll never see it. And that's why I think Pult will not ready any turret up. I'll be surprised if he gets any cloak detection or saves mules. Yeah, that is definitely what Pult could assume. We'll have to see though. Pult He's a pretty good Terran player. Maybe if his SCD can slip in and see no command center, he might assume something like Banshees could be coming. He might. I, it's, it's, it's a tough I don't call, think, but yeah, because the command center could be in the main and just float down. But Hard is playing this so smart. Look, two Marines in front. I mean, you're n most of the time not going to be able to get inside even this natural to see anything that's going on. So I really feel like this is a very well-honed, executed build by Hart. And it's going to come at a a pretty hard time to stop. SCD gets in, and that is not going to be in range. Uh, Banshees, or Starport is going to switch over. A Banshee is being started here. And even a Widowmine could be added here. A lot of times you'll see Hellions being added instead, but it's not going to be that case. And from seeing that command center as well, normally you'll get a Raven after your first Banshee, but that's not going to happen at all. Reaper unfortunately goes down as the Marines of Pult are just in front. And like you said, I'm not sure if Pult's aware of this no. yet. He doesn't have the engineering base started, and that's what you need when you have this late of a starport. Yeah. It's because this build, this build is supposed to kind of punish players that read too much into the Reaper. Uh, and, and rightfully so, I mean, how many people actually do a build where they go a Reaper opening into Fast Banshees? It's very rare in TVT. Yeah, it, we're seeing a lot of mind games in the early game in these first two games. Kind of non-traditional openings by Paul in game one, and now in this game as well with the CC first. That's not oh. a common build these days. Wow, big scan. He sees everything. He sees the Banshee tech, and he sees the impending siege tanks there that will be made for a potential push. Pult on top of it. But still, his engineering bay is just now underway, and Cloak is only about 20 seconds, 10 seconds now from finishing. He so will have two scans, He'll have two scans. 
He that will help out a lot. It's hard to kill this Banshee though. Yeah, that's Even with true. a scan when you don't have Stim Marines and you don't have any Vikings. Well, let's take a look at the kill count because that's going to be the most important thing. Cloak has finished four total kills. Uh, he's just damaging a lot of units. And a turret's going to go down here. Hard. A little bit too prudent with this initial Banshee. Now uh, he has a second Cloak Banshee in the way to the natural one. I don't think that turret's going to be ready in time. I don't think so either. Now starting his work on some Marines. And two shots Marines. Remember that Cloak, or excuse me, Scan is going to go off here. But Can't won't do, do that much though. damage. Yeah. Uh, cloak Banshee on the other side now killing a couple Marines here. Killing an SCV as well. So doing a good job so far. Hart able to put on the pressure. Let's take a look at the units lost tab. 600 to 112 total kills. So looking good. Uh, Hart, let's look at this income, 32 to 34. I think Hart still needs to do more, but wow, did two he, Banshees, or two Medivacs. He saw it though with his yes, cloaked Banshee, he so he's moving his units into position, and that's good because if he didn't, I think he would have trouble against this many Marines and two Medivacs with Stim this early in the game. I think so. And even the Widow Mine in the front kind of tells him, okay, I don't have to worry about any forward pushes. Stim is finished, I believe. Yes, and he's going to Stim and take two big shots, Hart. Perfect play out of our Axiom player. So smart to set up the siege tanks in siege mode out of vision range where the medevacs would drop as well. Yeah. Some players would have just grouped all the units up at the ledge and prevented them from landing. But Hart realized he could take advantage and kill us, get some free kills there. Yep. And things look good. Medevac, oh, look at this. The most expensive scout you've ever seen. Boosted medevac coming in here and just rushes away. Banshee will put pressure on a single supply depot on the other side. And I have to say, I really like what we're seeing so far from Hart. This build makes a lot of sense, and especially against Polt, who reads so much into the early stages. Hart was, again, able to come out of that pretty cost-efficiently, 100 to 950. And let's look at the income. It's pretty close for the income, so things are stabilizing. Upgrade slightly ahead for Polt, uh, but production slightly ahead for, um, for Hart. So, advantages and disadvantages. Yeah, Hart also has more siege tanks, which could be a pretty big advantage in the mid game. Yes, it can. Third command centers are starting, or third command center is starting for Polt. So that's where he's looking to put his first investment. Normally, people will go up to three barracks, then put down a third command center, or even one barracks, a third command center, and then go up to five. But Polt's not going to do that. And talk to me, like, how, how do you kind of read this game so far, Ghost User? What's your, what's your mindset? Because you are the pro player. Well, first, I just want to point out what Polt's doing to kill his mine. Instead of using a scan, he's just alternating Marines and killing them with his tank. And that's incredibly smart. Yes, it is. But so far, my read on this game is that Hart's build looked like it would be pretty good for him. But Polt, he kind of got kind of fortunate with his scan timing and realized what was up. So he took some damage, but he was able to defend. I think Hart ended up a little bit ahead, though, just in terms of having more tanks. But if he doesn't start a third command center, he's going to have to get something done against Polt, or that third command center from Polt will slowly give him a bigger advantage. They are looking like they're playing Ring Around the Rosie right now. Upgrades 0-0 zero, zero for Hart, but he's continuing to put on pressure. Uh, Polt is just about to get one. No, he's at 1-0 getting his plus one armor. So things are going to even out pretty soon here. His plus one weapons and combat shield's about to finish. Hart just going to pull back taking a little bit of map control. Doesn't really know where his opponent is. It's actually interesting how long Hart's delaying his third command center this game. He's at about 130 supply and he still hasn't started it Wait, yet. What? Okay, I like building armor, but this is, uh, this is a little bit early for that, Hart. Yeah, I think that could possibly be a mistake at yeah. this point. A mistake or... Yeah, I, I think so. I mean, normally you want plus one armor, right? That's yeah, I mean, there's thing. not much that his building armor is going to help at this point. Yeah. I agree. Um, but at this point, we're just waiting for the initial engagement. I like how Hart, or excuse me, I like Pult's build directly after this. I think he's been playing the better uh, build or the better follow-up so far with the third command center and playing pretty defensive for the most part. It's hard to get things done on Worldwind, I would say. And that's why uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky for Hart to do something. Uh, but, you know, he has the one Raven. The one Raven does represent... Uh, potential pickups or unsieges, I should say. I'm a bit scared for Polt here, actually. Hart has a full energy Raven that's 200 secret missiles. He's up four tanks and he's ahead of Marines. If he does a, a perfect engagement here, I think Hart 
might be able to take a fight. Well, it looks like he's trying to get the flank. And that will help quite a bit. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be enough, though. I I'm still very scared for Hart. I don't know if he can actually pull this off just yet. Because, I mean, defensive siege tanks. That's what it comes down to. Little pokes here, trying to get a siege tank. The pult on top of things, and we'll be able to defend accordingly. Yeah, maybe Hart's is going for a bit of a contain, and then he's going to take his own third behind this. And I think it looks like that might be what he's doing. Yeah. If he was going to go for an engagement, he wouldn't have moved up to the third base like this. Well, Hart's time is numbered right now, because 2-2 two -two is on the way for Pult, but not so much for his opponent. And there's a big Doom drop. Oh, Marines in position. Can he take out some of the Medivacs? No, he's gonna not going to target them down. Sim Marines are going to initiate and kill all the siege, or the turrets inside of the main base. One single siege tank will not be focused down. And... Hey, this actually looks pretty good for Hart because this bottleneck is actually messing Pult up a lot. But Pult has a lot of Marines here. Yeah, we'll I think he can overwhelm this force. We'll find out as the Marines are going to go down. The siege tanks will go down and Pult will be able to stabilize his main base. But Again. look at how many units Hart has moving across the middle of the map. He didn't lose as much there as you might think. He has a lot of Marines and still three siege tanks moving up here. Oh, if you and look at the units lost tab, it's a lot better for Hard at this point. And now pushing into the siege tanks, losing another one. There's an alarming amount of units, but 2-2. Two, 2-1 two, two, is about to finish up right now for Polt. If you can get that, all of a sudden his Marines are in a much better state of mind. But this is a stage that's a little bit tricky. I mean... You have the upgrade advantage for one player against the just position and mass units of the other player. And anything can happen if Hart misplays this ever so slightly. He can be overrun so easily, lose map control, and also probably lose the game right after that with the momentum switch. Yeah, he has to be so careful, especially about protecting his siege tanks here. If he loses one or two tanks, Polk could take a lead and be able to break out of this contain. And this contain is incredibly important for Hart at this oh, point. but... This is what we have to focus on, the Doom Drop, the counter Doom Drop, to take a little bit more space, say, hey, Hart, back up, and this can do so much damage because 2-2 two, two is just about to finish. What is back here that can cost efficiently trade against as Marines are sprinting into position, and I think this is going to crush Hart. I don't know what he can do against this, but a Siege Tank is going to be placed in a nice position, targeting down the Siege Tank first. We'll find out as the Marines... It looks like there's just enough Marines. Okay. Yeah, so he is able to push that back, and he didn't lose that much there. That's true, and, and killing the engineering bay obviously helps out a little bit there. And he shut down Pult siege tank production from one of those factories momentarily. All right, well, I think we're going to have a huge push out pretty soon here. It is 2-2 against 1-0. Uh, just a, a massive uh, advantage over here in upgrades I don't for know how Pult's going to break out of this, though. I think Pult can just 1A. There's four tanks. Uh, There's a lot of a lot, yeah. Hart has pretty much units here. If but Pult does break out, I'm not sure how he's going to do it. You'll be surprised the difference between 2-2 two, two and 1-0. One, uh, and here we're going to see it right now. Uh, Marines are going to get shredded apart. Coming in from three sides, is it going to be enough? And it looks like it is. The Marines are just too much for Pult, or for Hart. And Pult is able to take resounding victories in that fight. Let's take a look at the units tab. Army tab, Pult is behind, but I would even say Pult's army is ahead because of that upgrade advantage. And Hart, I think he's only on 1-0 on his Marines now. Yeah. I think that building armor was supposed to be plus one armor for this Marine. <laughs> I think so too. Uh, a small pack of units are going to be picked off here, but you don't want to engage because these Marines can kill, well, not with that siege, siege tank over there. Well, may uh, maybe not. As the Marines are just going to overpower everything, Hart loots another battle in the middle of the map. And this is going to give Pult enough momentum to push into the third base. I don't know what Hart can do against this. The Marines are too hardy. Yeah, this, these upgrades are playing such a huge role in this game. Hart, he's still ahead in supply, actually. But his Marines are just so much worse than Pult. Yeah. And now, pushing a little bit forward. Uh, it's going to be tough. I mean, what Hart needs to do right now is just try to back up and get a high siege tank count. But I don't think he's going to have enough time. Everything just gets shredded to pieces. Plus three weapons attack just about to finish. And there's a very healthy amount of, of uh, medevacs over here for Pult. It's going to be 3-2 against 1-0 pretty soon. 
Yeah, that was just the perfect engagement I pulled to break out of that <laughs> contain. Going in from three different sides was exactly what he needed to do. Uh, yes. Uh, that, that's correct. And the Marines are just going to be too much. Another round of Marines walking in here. And these are like, these aren't Marines. These are like Thors at this point. They just crush everything. Every SEV dies. And GG gets called out. Hart 